Coming up, the hazards of preserving life in the wild. Okay, what's going on here? Wildlife trade is a $10 billion a year business. Wild animals torn from nature, killed for food, or captured live, confined, chained, sold as exotic pets. I wanted to know what happens when you rip an animal out of paradise and turn it into a plaything, oh, and what it takes to put things right. Okay, what's going on here? So we headed out into the wild. To truly appreciate why wild animals belong in the wilderness, you have to go there. So we went to one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world, the Costa Rican rainforests. And we're flying down here to this remote area. This is known as the Peninsula de Osa. We left the big city, heading for the crown jewel of Costa Rica's park system. So we're here in the center of Puerto Jimenez. This is a small little gold mining town. It's also the gateway into Corcovado National Park. In order to get in there, you've got to hike for a couple of days, or you can do what we're doing, and we're taking the uh, aero taxi. This is the shortest landing strip in all of Costa Rica. They literally clear cut the rainforest. If we don't make it, the plane goes into the ocean. We've got a life bus in the back of the plane. Not these will do us any good, huh? We packed up all of our gear and our guide into a tiny single engine plane and held on tight. We're flying over, entering Corcovado. Corcovado is one of the most biologically intense places on Earth. That had to be the coolest landing. Home to the largest and only primary lowland rainforest in the world, 140 different animal species, many endangered. <coughs> Professor Eduardo Carrillo of the National University of Costa Rica is a top expert in jungle ecology, and he's one hell of a guide. And he says that an ocelot just passed through this trail. In just 24 hours, we saw more than most park visitors see in a week. <coughs> Rugged, remote, stunningly beautiful, inside the forest, and out. So this is the Rio Serena. This river meets the ocean right here, and during high tide, which is right now, bull sharks, sometimes up to 12 feet long, come through here and feed, and there's also crocodiles swimming through the waters. Just to cross this area would be risking your life. Eduardo spotted a spider monkey right up in this tree. Why do you shake the leaves? What is I am challenge them, and they are going to come to fight with me. Oh, really? <laughs> Whoa! He just took this and threw it out of the tree at us. He's <laughs> <laughs> a mean little guy. Yeah. Why, why would he throw a stick at us? He's not happy. We're standing right in the middle of a pack of peccaries. These are the main food source for pumas, jaguars, and all the cats here in the forest. And people living nearby the forest come in and hunt these because they taste really good. So we're heading into the jungle now. Uh, obviously the sun's down and at night a whole different slew of creatures comes out. Uh, We're just about 20 feet away from this giant puma. You can get a little bit closer if you want. Can I get closer? Let's try it. We don't want to disturb him because he can get aggressive. It's incredible to be this close to such a magnificent animal in the wild. 
beautiful. She's in really good condition. Yeah, she's and she's she is getting a up. juvenile. She's getting up. What does that mean? Nothing. Yeah. Is she coming towards us? Yeah. Don't no move. Problem. No problem. Okay, it's beautiful animal. Gorgeous. Be cool, don't worry. Okay, let's go. Even for me, it's not so often to see something like that. And you've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah, exactly. It's a, an amazing experience. It's Definitely an adrenaline rush. <laughs> <laughs> How does it make you feel when you see people that have animals that you find in the rainforest as pets? That is a, a big problem. It's really nice to have a, a baby monkey, but they, when they grow, they become wild. They have instincts. They can bite people. As a, it's the same with other animals. That a wild animal is a wild animal always. They are not good pets. You can see it's a beautiful sunset with the forest. What else can you, you ask? What else? It's beautiful. I feel God here. Can you feel it? We are not alone in this life. We are not the only species. It's beautiful and it's isolated. To wildlife traffickers, this beauty equals profit. But as we're about to see, help is just a boat ride away. I'm the certified jungle woman. You! You're the woman of the jungle, huh? She has a single mission, rescue and return the animals to the wild, whatever the cost. Oh yeah, she's got bite marks all over here. You've got uh, the scars to prove what you do. These are the badges of courage I wear. <laughs> <laughs> and by the end of our journey, we had badges too. Oh. What do you call these, uh, monkey tattoos? This is a sanctuary tattoo. Sanctuary tattoo. <laughs> As dawn breaks over Puerto Jimenez, Costa Rica, a small town on the west coast, you can hear the eerie sound of a passing troop of howler monkeys. Animal traffickers take anything from macaws to monkeys from the rainforests of Central America and sell them to the highest bidder at dozens of auctions held across the United States. They often become victims of abuse and neglect, caged, chained, tranquilized, or sometimes beaten into submission. I'm the certified jungle woman. You! Those who are lucky enough to be rescued are given to Carol Cruz. She's got bite marks all over here. You've got uh, the scars to prove what you do. These are the badges of courage I wear. <laughs> <laughs> do visitors ever get uh, chomped on by monkeys? On occasion, if they don't do as I tell them to do. Yes, they do. <laughs> 15 years ago, Cruz sold everything she had packed her bags, and left San Francisco and moved to Costa Rica. Come on. We got a cookie. Cookie wookie. Cruz runs the Sanctuario Silvestri. It's a wildlife rescue center that borders a national park. What makes her rescue center unique, it's, raining. it's the only one I've ever seen where the people live in cages and animals roam free. But freedom means my crew and I are at the mercy of the monkeys. Meet Sweetie. When she was just four days old, Poachers shot her mother for her meat, ripping Sweetie off her dead mother's back, throwing her into the forest, leaving her to die. And because of her past, Sweetie is not so sweet. Cruz says she especially dislikes men. Uh, she definitely rules. Uh, <sighs> Every time we enter the kitchen, we have to run. <laughs> Humans live in cages, so yeah, we're all caged does. in to eat lunch. Okay, the monkeys roam free. Uh, this is where I do all of my work. Home sweet home. All the monkeys sleep all right lunch. next to mama. Yep. Life is good in a cage. Why did you decide on that philosophy? for you and the volunteers to be living in cages and the animals to be roaming free? I think we're working with an incredibly intelligent species here, uh, primates, and if you acclimate them to life in a cage, 
I don't think they're as apt to leave. They're not as courageous. They have to break that bond of what they've lived in for three to four years. The little one over here was confiscated from a hotel. Some tourist came to us almost half dead. It was so dehydrated. Come here, little guy. Hello. <laughs> oh, he's kissing me. These guys are small, but they're some of the loudest mammals on Earth. When you hear them in the forest, it's so creepy. All kinds of creatures live here. Most of all, Carol's favorite, monkeys. <laughs> These capuchins have to be caged because of their aggression. That they are true victims of the pet trade. I will enter this cage only with the idea that I'm the sacrificial lamb. Carol tells us that she can't go into the cage because she's the alpha monkey in this jungle, and the capuchins would try to knock her off. They're considered the third smartest land mammal on Earth. We went into the cage, so that makes us the fourth. These are very aggressive monkeys. They're constantly moving around, uh, which is, is one of the reasons they shouldn't be kept as pets. <laughs> Okay, what's going on here? Pablo, no. I'm getting out of here. The last guy that came through here had to get 13 stitches. They called a, a sanctuary tattoo. Remember Sweetie? She's the spider monkey with a grudge against men. One day she'll leave the sanctuary and join a wild troop. But today we get a firsthand look at how quickly a tame monkey can get dangerous. Yeah, Walk baby, away. Yeah. Walk away. See, she doesn't hate men. Uh, producer Steve was holding uh, one of the spider monkeys and he slipped and she got scared and bit him on the head. And so now he's no, got that. Oh. This is a sanctuary tattoo. Sanctuary tattoo. Does this kind of show why, you know, people think they can just keep these monkeys as oh, pets? It's wildlife. And look what happened. She wasn't even trying to. Why do you think it's called wildlife? I've been bitten by almost every species here at the sanctuary, and it's just, you know, it just goes with the job. Oh, look, she got a leaf. Oh, what a good monkey. He's still a little sad. He hasn't quite gotten over the loss of his mother yet. Are these like your adopted children? Ooh, they are, like and, this. and it is a bittersweet moment when they leave, but if you ever witness releasing an animal back to the wild, it is such a euphoric feeling that it gives you the energy and the strength through all those losses, through all that heartache to continue because it's such an incredibly good feeling. When Lulu, our three-year-old howler monkey, uh, gave birth, baby was still wet and she brought him down for me to see. And it, that just about took me to my knees. Bittersweet is a good word to describe what Carol Cruz does. She hopes the animals she cares for so much will leave her. Hello. But she knows, because of the damage people do to animals, there will unfortunately always be more.